The Kyrie Irving situation really shook the NBA world this season. After the Nets guard tweeted out a link to the anti-Semitic movie, things went downhill for him and his team. He received a suspension, but everyone was calling on the team to make a decision about his return. We'll get into this in the video and look at what this whole situation can teach us. First up, why can't the Nets delay their decision? After the situation escalated and Kyrie's anti-Semitic tweet was getting more and more attention, the Nets decided to suspend him, saying that he is currently unfit to be associated with them. Clearly, they don't support Kyrie's views, and there's no space for intolerance anywhere within the organization. But as you can expect, Kyrie's suspension did cause quite a few problems for the team. Following his absence from the team, Steve Nash was also removed as head coach, with Ime Adoka stepping up, then stepping down, and then finally Jacques Vaughn was announced as the permanent replacement. If you're a Nets fan, you know that this season has been extra tough, and Kyrie's absence only added to it. Even though they've been doing okay under new leadership, Kyrie being gone has definitely left a void, and they need to decide when he's coming back, or even if he's coming back. Next, let's get into some stats about how the team has been performing before and after Irving's suspension. 23 to 119, Irving. Fancy dribbling, fade, book it. Without Irving, Brooklyn had won 4-2 because of a more energetic defense, improved ball movement, and some smart rotation. When Vaughn stepped in, he made some much-needed changes. He took over after the Nets fired Steve Nash after a 2-5 start. Even though they've been doing well so far, Sunday's loss to the Lakers served as a reminder that the Nets are extremely dependent on Kevin Durant to hard carry. There are a lot of reasons behind this, and we'll get into them in just a bit, but the main one is the fact that a lot of players like Ben Simmons, Joe Harris, and Seth Curry have had a lot of health concerns. They're either not performing, inconsistent, or absent entirely. When you compare this to the stats in Irving's games, there's a clear difference. During Irving's eight games, Brooklyn finished 20th in offense, 27th in defense, and 27th in point differential. Right now, the Nets are first in defense, first in point differential, and 11th in scoring since his suspension. Of course, you can factor in playing an extremely easy schedule and a small sample size, but it's still better. Now for what's changed in the team. Anyone with eyes can see a clear difference in how things started for the Nets and the way that they are right now. As a team, they have worked together and increased their focus and cohesiveness. This was looking very unlikely at the beginning of the season when everyone was looking lazy and honestly, a bit lost. A lot of people were arguing that the front office should trade Durant and dismantle the roster entirely. But this shift in the team's attitude has changed people's views too. It's clear that he wasn't the problem. The team just didn't have any strategy under Steve Nash. Of course, this whole thing isn't directly related to Kyrie Irving's suspension because most of the internal struggles in the team were due to Steve Nash's weak leadership. Under Vaughn, they defeated the Los Angeles Clippers on Saturday by a score of 110-95. to The new head coach said that the mentality of the defense has shifted entirely, and that completely explains why they're performing so much better now. He also talked about how everyone is contributing to every play. In the Nets coach's own words, there's not too many plays where a shot isn't contested. We don't run back or we don't box out. We can all clearly see that everyone's always filling in for each other. When the players' chemistry between them improves, it definitely makes a significant difference. Coach Vaughn deserves all the credit because it's due. Moving on to how Nash and Vaughn are different. Katie recently revealed in an interview that Steve Nash's way of coaching was one of the reasons that he requested a trade back in the summer. In case you needed a refresher, this was making headlines everywhere, and people were wondering which team would actually add Durant to its roster. After all, he is one of the best players, a 12-time All-Star and two-time Finals MVP. The list goes on and on. The Slim Reaper talked about about how he frequently clashed with the old coach because he thought the practices weren't pushing the players enough and everybody's full talent wasn't being utilized. It makes sense now because you can clearly see a transformation in the team, and this has greatly improved their performance. This is why 47-year-old Vaughn deserves praise for orchestrating this comeback. Nash, a former star, was chosen to serve the Brooklyn Nets as stars. Vaughn, on the other hand, has tried to use his unique experiences as a college standout and an NBA backup to fix any holes in relationships throughout the squad. Coming up, the problem for Jacques and the Nets. And let's talk about some of these uh, scenarios that are happening. And, uh, the main problem for the new coach was how to handle Simmons, who hasn't been doing well at all this season, especially when you compare his stats to last season. Nash let Simmons play for a long time, way longer than he should have been allowed. It was very obvious that the three-time All-Star was seriously jeopardizing Brooklyn's leaving space and engaging in a lot of foul trouble. In a smart and courageous move, Vaughn has dropped Simmons, reducing his playing time and making the top choice from 2016 step aside. As for the Nets, they need to make a decision because this whole thing is creating a lot of 
of confusion. When you think about their relationship with Durant, it would become very strained if they waived Irving or traded him, or sent him home without first coming up with a better plan. Katie said just last week that he wishes the team could have just kept playing basketball and kept silent throughout the recent turmoil and aftermath of Irving's now deleted tweet. Unfortunately for the Nets, this situation with Irving isn't new because they went through something similar when Irving didn't want to get vaccinated. Back then, he was allowed to play part-time, and even then, Katie supported him. Despite everything, Durant has remained loyal to his teammate Irving through thick and thin, and he's doing the same right now. Let's move on to what Kyrie Irving can teach us. Being consistent, you know, he's he's going to do his thing out there on the score and in, um, but he, he was... The NBA can definitely work a lot on building tolerance within the league. They should think about clarification. They should not cover this incident up and let it go, but resolve it in front of everyone so that it can be a lesson. This will ensure that something like this won't happen, and all fans who are affected by comments like this can feel like they're respected and seen. Overall, if Irving's actions and punishments are dealt with in the light rather than the dark will benefit everyone a lot more. Thankfully, the league dealt with this whole thing in a much smoother way, and Irving was quickly banished from the Nets. He also lost multiple sponsorships and endorsements as a result, so it can be a lesson for any other player who needs it. Let's talk about what this can serve as a reminder for. This whole situation with Kyrie can remind us of many things. First, sports can also be a channel for our worst, darkest views. It also tells us that just because you're not white, it doesn't mean that you can talk smack about other minorities who are also oppressed. Kyrie used his massive social media platform to express his hateful views, which grew as a result of his excellence on the basketball court and not from his year at Duke. Even though he had access to the best scholars and was part of some of the brightest students in the country, he chose to remain ignorant, as many of us do sometimes. Because of his ignorance, and stubbornness, he promoted the anti-Semitic movie which completely denied the Holocaust, one of the worst events in history. There are levels to this. We should all not take our knowledge for granted, and Kyrie's ignorance is a reminder of this. Living in this world means you have access to unlimited knowledge. It's a shame people still use it to incite hate. Finally, how can the league have a better response? Even though the situation is not the exact same, you can compare it to the NBA's response following George Floyd's murder and the formation of the Black Lives Matter movement, which was motivated by the slogan, NBA Cares. The NBA and WNBA launched a social justice coalition to concentrate on policing, legal justice, and voting rights. And this is what you call a major difference in the league. It's extremely important to quell all these hate speech movements and condemn them immediately so they don't spread. It should now include anti-Semitism in the social outreach program or create a similar one, especially when you think about the fact that the spike in hate crimes against Jews over the past 10 years is right behind hate crimes against black people in America. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about the whole situation with Kyrie Irving and the Nets' decision? Do you agree that we can learn something from this incident? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one!